In previous modules, we recorded and edited an animation sequence a facial performance for our metahuman. In this module, let's start the process of using that animation sequence in a level sequence to play back the animation on our metahuman. We'll start by creating a level sequence. I'm here in my animations folder for my metahuman, and I'll right click, go to animation, and then select level sequence to create a level sequence. Let's just name this after the scene. Scene underscore one, and hit enter. The asset's created, but it's not saved. Let's use control S to save that asset, and then double click to open in our sequencer. Now that we have a level sequence, let's add our metahuman to the sequence so that we can animate her. We'll select the actor from the level, go to the plus track button, and select actor to sequencer, and then find our actor at the top of the list since she's already selected. By default, Unreal is going to add the actor with a control rig for the body and a control board for the face. For the purposes of this lesson, we're not going to need the body animation, so let's right click on that track and choose Delete. Next, in the face track, we have a control board, and we're not going to need that yet because we're going to use an animation sequence. Let's right click on the control board track and delete that as well. Now we can use the plus track button here on the face track to add animation to our metahuman. By clicking the plus track button and going to animation, we'll see a list of all animation sequences that are connected to metahuman faces. Here we can select the animation sequence that we've been editing. Note that in the pop-up information, we see the path that tells us that this is the animation associated with our Danielle metahuman. There's another animation sequence with the same name but the path indicates that this is the original take that was captured by the take recorder. Let's go to our edited animation sequence and select it. Now the animation sequence is here on the animation track for the face of our metahuman in the level sequence, but when we scrub through the timeline, we don't see any animation on our metahuman. This is because the animation blueprint that we have selected for the metahuman face actor is actually still set to the Faceware Studio animation blueprint that we had created earlier. Let's change that to the default MetaHuman animation blueprint so that animations in the animation sequencer can be shown. We'll select our MetaHuman, choose the face component, and in the animation group, change our animation class from our Faceware animation blueprint and instead choose Face Anim BP, which is the default animation blueprint for metahuman faces. With that selected, our metahuman actor will now perform any animation sequence that we're playing back here in Sequencer. By default, our level sequence only has 150 frames. Jump to the end, we haven't really gotten through the entire animation sequence. So let's correct that by extending our timeline out to at least 800 frames. I'll click this value here to the right of our scroll bar and type 800 and hit enter. Now we can see more of our frames and see that the animation sequence ends here. We'll scrub out to that ending and see that we're very close to frame 400. Let's jump directly to frame 400 by entering it right here. 400, enter. Now I can use our right bracket to set the end point of our level sequence. And now we can see our entire animation sequence fits here in our sequencer view. Let's grab the right side of this scroll bar and drag to the left to zoom back in. So now we can really focus on the entirety of this animation sequence. Now let's set up an audio file so we can synchronize our animation to the audio from the original video. If we look in the folder structure for our project, under Content Movies, we'll find an audio file that's called HungryPurpleDinosaur.Wave. This is the original audio from the video that was tracked in Faceware, provided as a WAV file. However, if we go to our project, into the Content Browser, we'll reveal our Source Panel, and go to the Movies folder, we don't have an asset for that audio file. We'll need to import that 
so that we have an audio asset that we can use in Sequencer. So we'll right click, choose Import, and select our audio wave file. Now that that's imported, we have an asset that we can use in our sequencer. Let's make sure that we select and control S to save that, and then return to sequencer. Now we can add an audio track by clicking the plus track button here in sequencer and selecting audio track. Finally, clicking the plus audio button here on our audio track allows us to select the newly created audio asset. That asset was dropped into the current frame, which at the moment is frame 400. Let's drag that back in our sequencer to the beginning of our clip. Here we are. Now we can push play and hear our audio. We'll go to the beginning of our clip, frame zero, push play. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. Okay. Obviously, our animation's not in sync. So let's scrub through the timeline and look for where the beginning of our clip is in our animation sequence. As we scrub through here, we can see that there's a point here where our animation gets ready to start performing. Right here, we have our neutral frames at the end of the clip. And scrubbing a little bit further as we look at the face, we'll see her face respond and get ready to begin performing. So right here, we'll right click on our animation sequence, choose edit and trim section left. This will remove all of the animation sequence that takes place before this frame. So edit, trim selection left. And now we've trimmed the beginning off of our recording since that was the end of the video being tracked. Now let's slide our animation sequence to the beginning of the performance in Sequencer, go back to our first frame and audition this by hitting play. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering... Okay, we're close, but not quite there. Now the audio file shows us the waveform. So we can see that right here is the word the, and then here's the word hungry. Let's click here and just listen. The hungry purple... Great. So right here, is where our audio announces the word hungry. Let's look for that moment here in our animation sequence where the jaw opens up to say the word hungry. I'm just gonna click on our animation sequence and drag to the left, and there we go. Let's take the beginning of this animation and bring it back to the first frame. When we drag the beginning of our animation sequence, only moving the endpoint for that sequence. This frame here is still the same frame where the jaw was open. So let's go to the beginning again and play. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. Great. So we have a much better sync now with our animation with this audio file. So we don't need the end of this. Now I could right click and choose edit, trim section right. That would remove the end of this. I could also simply click the very end of this animation sequence and drag towards our ending point. That would work as well. And one other option is I could right click, choose edit, and then split section. This cuts our animation sequence into two separate sections. And I could select the ending and choose delete from my keyboard to remove it. Finally, if we look at this, we're not sure if we're exactly in sync. What would really help is if we could see the original frames from the video and make sure that something really identifiable, such as this blink, is in sync with the original video. So let's bring in the frames from the original video so we can use those to compare the synchronization of our animation sequence. Looking back at our folder structure in our project content movies, there's another folder called HBD. Inside here is a PNG sequence. This is one PNG file for every frame in the original video. We can use this in Unreal Engine within our sequencer to play the video back in Unreal Engine. 
Let's set this up by beginning in the content browser. We'll set up an image media source in order to bring in that image sequence. To do that, we'll just right click, go to media, and then choose image media source. We'll call this HPD underscore frames. Enter. Let's double click and choose our sequence path. Just click this ellipsis button. This will bring our file browser open. We'll go into HPD and select the first frame of the sequence. Choose Open. The path is relative, which is great, but we do need to set up our frame rate for this image sequence. So let's extend this area. And for frame rate override, make sure we choose 60 frames a second, which is the original frame rate of the original video. With this set up, we can hit save and close this window. Going back to our sequencer, we can now add a track to play back that image sequence. To do that, we'll go to the plus track button and then select media track. In media track, we'll click the plus media button and choose our HPD frames media source. This drops in our media source at whatever frame our playback head is at. So let's bring this back to the beginning of the sequence and then extend it for the duration of the sequence. Finally, we need to make sure our sequence has the same frame rate as the image sequence. So we'll switch this from 30 frames to 60 frames per second. Let's save our sequence at this point. Now, our animation is able to read in those frames, but we can't see them in our project yet. So let's bring up a plane that we can display while we're working in our sequencer so that we can see the frames from the original video. First, we'll need to make sure that these frames are being put onto a texture that can be used in a material. So we'll right click our HPD frames here in the sequencer, go to Properties, and then go to our Media Texture section. It's set to None by default. If we click this drop down, we have the opportunity to create a new asset, a media texture. So we'll select that. We'll put this in our Movies folder, and we'll call this HPD underscore texture. Let's click Save. And then make sure that this is assigned to our HPD frames by right clicking, going to Properties, going to Media Texture, and selecting our new media texture from this drop down. Now, as the sequencer plays, each frame of the video will be put into this texture. We'll save our sequence again. And now let's return to our content browser and click Save All to make sure that all the assets that we've been creating have been saved. Finally, here's our HPD texture that we just created. Let's put that onto a plane in view in our level. We'll go to Place Actors. Under Basic, we'll locate the plane, drag that into our scene. Let's lift it up so we can see it a little better. And then we'll drag our HPD texture onto that plane to create a material that'll display it. Next, let's rotate this plane into position so we can easily see it. Tap the E key, we'll rotate up in this case by 90 degrees, and we'll spin it around 180 degrees so we can see it. And then use the W key so that we can move this into place where it's easy to see. The aspect ratio of this is a little bit off. This video has a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So for scale, Let's use 1.6 for X, and then we'll use 0.9 for the width. So now we have a 16 by nine aspect ratio plane displaying our original video in the level as the level sequencer plays. When we dragged our texture onto this plane, it automatically generated a new material. HPD, texture material. There's a star on its tile, indicating that it's 
not saved yet. So let's go ahead and click Save All and save all of our unsaved assets. Finally, we can go back to our sequencer and let's set the end of the sequence to match the end of our videos here. Move the playhead to the end and click our right bracket to set the end of our sequence. Finally, let's play this back, see how it looks. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. So sync looks pretty good. Let's just double check on those eyes. Scrolling backwards, sure enough, the eyes in our animation descend and ascend in sync with our playback video. This puts us in a great position to evaluate our original video against the performance that we're getting from our MetaHuman so that we can make fine edits to the animation sequence. We'll do some more of that beginning in the next module.